Good morning. Welcome, Welcome worship. worship. I have, I have to say, to say I, when I, I uh, got out of Limehouse, there were seven of me at Limehouse. Lime I, I said, said if there are 30 at Knox, I would be surprised. We have a couple, we may get, get, get a couple. But uh, I, I'm very glad and grateful to have our YouTube feed because I imagine we have several watching us and Craig to make sure everybody can hear and see everything today. We gather together and worship together and we hear these words. Sing a new song. A song of thanks and praise, for God has done wondrous deeds and is great beyond compare. Let us praise and worship. Oh, you've got music there? Or were you going to sing it on piano? Oh, I was going to let me. Okay, good, because that's what I was going to do. Our first song for this morning is one you may not know. It's a simple worship chorus. We're going to sing it through. Um, well, for teaching, I'll sing it through once, and then we'll sing it through as a group uh, twice more. So it's uh, step by step, or oh God, you are my God. God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. And I will learn to walk in your ways And step by step you'll lead me And I will follow you all of my days Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Let's pray. Oh God. Our God, you have called us and we are yours. In Scripture it says that we are the sheep of your pasture and where God, where Jesus calls himself the good shepherd, he says he calls us by name and we respond to his call. How wonderful it is that we are known, that we are loved and we are cared for and forgiven. How wonderful because we know our sins. Some we can name because we have committed them and some we can't because they've been done in ignorance or in apathy. Nevertheless, there are those who have been hurt by our selfishness and our self-interest, and we've even struck at the root of our relationship with you. Forgive us indeed, O Lord our Father. Remind us again that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus and that we are sustained by the Holy Spirit, alive and at work in the world by your irrepressible will. Draw us up out of our sins and set us on the solid rock, we ask today and every day. Amen. Please be seated. And friends, hear the good news. Beloved, you are forgiven in Christ, the Lamb who bears our sin. Happy are those who put their trust in God and delight to do God's will. For God makes our footing sure upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And it's great to see everyone come out on this snowy day. But just as a sidebar, 
I was talking to my uh, daughter this week, and in Calgary, it has not been less than minus 38 below for a whole week. <laughs> so what you're saying is we can have the snow and we can have the cold. <laughs> but it's good to see all of you out this morning. If True, my sister lives in Edmonton. It's good to see you all here this morning, and if you, this is your first time worshiping with us, I hope it is not your last, please do sign the book at the back of the church so that we may be acquainted with you, and please join us downstairs for the coffee hour so that we may get to know you. The confidential prayer chain, you can contact Norma. Bible study is Sunday mornings at 9.15. Choir practice is Thursday at 7.30 in the sanctuary. There is session we've already had. Pastoral care team is Eric Walton and Ann Allen. Don't forget to mark on your calendar, February the 2nd is our annual meeting. Please, all of you come. If you have any questions, any concerns, please come to the annual meeting and bring your thoughts there as well. On January the 26th, a bazaar meeting will be held after the church service in the small hall. Friendship Circle will meet January the 27th in the ladies' parlor at 2 p.m. Week of prayer for Christian unity. Yeah, I was going to ask you to elaborate on it. I was just going to tell you that it is at the St. John's United Church afternoon at 4.30 p.m., and Reverend Steve will elaborate further on it. But before I go further, Jan has an announcement to make. The Christian Unity Service is going off this uh, afternoon. Uh, give me just a second here. I just wanted to find the list of, of guest speakers that we have. Um, 4.30 this afternoon at St. John's United, and we're going to be hearing uh, from a number of people that are dealing with some of the social care initiatives that the churches around town are involved in. We're going to be hearing from um, those who receive food assistance, uh, those who are in the housing initiative, uh, those who are talking about transportation. We're going to hear from Eliash, our, our latest uh, refugee. Uh, he is going to come in and he is going to talk about what it is like to be a new Canadian. Uh, we're also going to have Heino Klassen's talk for five minutes. I swear, no more than five minutes. We've threatened him with not bodily violence, but close. If he goes over five minutes, and if you know Heino, you know that he can talk for 50 without taking a breath. Um, but he's going to talk for five minutes about what community unity is doing in the community and some of the things that we are doing in the next year. Uh, wrapped around that is a service of worship that is uh, composed by the people of Malta, and it's about pulling together for God in your community. And as I say, they have a 14-foot canoe that they have somehow placed in the St. John Sanctuary. Uh, they, they were supposed to be doing it last night, and I'm hoping that somebody filmed it because we wanted to see exactly how that was going to happen. If you've been to St. John's and in their sanctuary, you know that there's not a lot of straight approaches into their sanctuary, so that was going to be a, a trick and a half, but it's, it's going to be a wonderful service, and I invite everyone to come out. Uh, 4.30 means we're done before 6 o'clock, so you can get home uh, to have supper and watch football if that's your thing, like mine, uh, and, uh, and, and it should be a really, really good afternoon. Now, I have here a letter from Evangel Hall. Uh, we recently took down um, our $1,000 commitment. We said at our finance review meeting, 
we were going to give Evangel Hall $1,000 for the reduction of their mortgage. I also tend to, ended up, oh, that was operations, but we do give to mortgage reduction. We, we, we have given a mortgage reduction in the past. Sorry, I was going off the note here. Um, we also, I also took down 25 bags of clothes and sundries. Uh, there were shoes, there were coats, there were a lot of things. And then the other night at session, we realized that I'd forgotten everything that was in the coat rack down in the small hall. So that still has to go. We support the work of Evangel Hall. Evangel Hall is one of the few letters that I still get. It's, it's a letter, an actual physical letter of thanks that we get when we take something down there. Most communications these days, as I've said before, are not in letters. They're in emails, or they're in texts, or they're in tweets. Twitter is one of the few things that I have not taken up from this world, uh, the, the, this new modern communications technology. I do email, I do text, I do not do tweets. But we got this letter, and, and uh, I'll leave it up here on the table for those of you to come and look at it if you wish, because there's the typed portion, which is basically a form letter that they've put, plugged in a couple of things. But then there's a written portion down below. The executive director of Evangel Hall took it upon herself to write an extra little bit of thanks. She says, amazing, thank you so much for your incredibly generous gifts. Your compassionate support is making our community warmer and healthier. Thank you so much for supporting our most vulnerable neighbors through these gifts and, as I said, your mortgage reduction donations. Happy New Year to all our friends. How many of you remember getting letters on a regular basis? Yeah. When Kathy and I first started as friends for three years before we even dated, we were in the Presbyterian Young People Society of Southwestern Ontario. Went from Windsor to Niagara, up to George, or up to uh, Orangeville, rather, and, and across to Owen Sound. And at that time, if you wanted to communicate with somebody, your choices were, like cheaply, your choices were you waited until after 11 o'clock at night to make a phone call, long distance, or you wrote a letter. And Kathy and I actually had several letters that we had sent back and forth to each other just as friends. And when we'd been to an event or an event was upcoming, that was when we would tend to write. That was when we would, uh, the, the network of friends would write to each other. And you wanted to hear from people. You wanted to hear what they had to say. What are they up to? What are they doing? And that was how you found out. And you waited for it. You see in the, the military movies all the time, especially movies about World War II, the guy comes up and he says, mail call. And everybody jumps up because maybe, maybe I'll have a letter today. Maybe there will be something today for me to receive that will tell me something from home. Part of our New Testament, the bulk of our New Testament, is letters from Paul to people that he had met in places where he had established churches and those people, when they knew that a letter was coming, when they heard that a letter had arrived, I mean, can you imagine their eagerness? Oh, letter from Paul's here. Paul's written us a letter. Paul's written a letter, and they're going to read it tonight. So come on out to, to, to the service tonight. What has Paul said? What is Paul going to say to us? It would have been <clears throat> tremendously exciting. The anticipation would have been amazing. Pardon? Oh, he would be. He did many, many times. But they would have appreciated him getting after them because it was Paul saying it. And they knew that any chastisement he had was out of love. Was out of love and for a want for them to be better to each other and to the world. So we have a blessing in letters that we receive, in letters that we yet read, in communications to each other. Every word is wonderful. Let us consider how we communicate with the world around us and the things that we say and do. Let's pray. Lord, we know how we communicate to the world around us, to those whom we love and those who we care for, to those 
who we are thanking for doing different things for us. And there is something about a letter that you can actually hold that can have a special uh, nature to it, a, a special degree of excitement. Lord, we ask your blessing upon us as we seek to speak your word, as we seek to be your people, reaching out into the world around us with your word, with your love, and with your grace. Guide us in our communications. We ask through Jesus, your Son, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So our hymn is number 763, Lord, Speak to Me. speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of your tongue as you have sought so let me seek your erring children lost and had done that. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see.
There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. The response of reading this morning is Psalm 40, verse 1 to 11, that you can find in your pew Bibles on page 555, or you can follow it on the screens north and south. And don't forget the last verse we all say in unison. I wanted pathetic... I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to the... Oh, difficult to read because of the... It's very... Let me hang on. Let me see if I can get it in the Pew Bible. It's fuzzy on the back screen. I'll start again. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the blood and iron. He set my feet on a rock and made me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man. Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. No one can recount to you were I, were I to speak and tell of them. They would be too many to declare. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Proclaim a righteousness in the great assembly. I do not, and my lips, as you know, O Lord. Do not withhold your mercy from me, O Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me.
verses. Paul said this, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of His grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in Him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, God is faithful. And from the Gospel of John, last week we had uh, the recounting of Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist, and this passage takes place immediately after the baptism. John 1, starting at verse 29 and going to verse 42, and you find it on page 1050 of the Pew Bible or on the screen. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is, <clears throat> pardon me, this is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him, except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. With these words in our minds and in our hearts, let's take a moment and stand and declare our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our meditation hymn this morning is actually based upon Psalm 98 as opposed to Psalm 40. But both contain that, new, that idea of singing a new song unto the Lord. In Psalm 98, it is we who sing because we want to praise the Lord in a new way. But in Psalm 40, as we read it, it is God who places the new song within us. In either case, we sing a new song unto the Lord. So let us join together and sing 422.
but 80s music. 95% of his listening choices are from that decade. The last bit is eclectic stuff that he has heard on podcasts or something, and, and that he follows up and does not get played on popular radio. Um, but and, you know, other than those things, he listens exclusively to 80s music, the music of that decade. He, he couldn't tell you anything about modern music. I mean, I'll throw out these names and see who, who knows... Pink, or Drake, or Beyonce, Pitbull, Eminem. Now, can you name songs that they sing? I know the names. I was going through the CDs that we have in our house, and the, the youngest CD that came in with popular music was the Grammy nominees of 2010. Yeah, I, I understand why my friend listens to 80s music. There are a lot of reasons. One of them, the, the biggest one, it's the music of our youth. It's the music that we listened to when we were in our teen years, our formative years. And I know what his teen years were like. This is the music that he would turn up to full volume and blast out all the chaos at home. This is the music he would listen to when he and his buddies were out having a good time. And this was the music that he was listening to when he was wooing his wife to his side low those many years ago. They met and got married in the early 90s, but it was still the 80s music that they would dance to and that they got married to. I mean, that was what was played at the reception. <clears throat> Pardon me. His attitude is there is no need for music past the 80s. That music is just fine as it is, and he's very comfortable with that. And I don't think he's alone in, in some of the general points of his attitude. I think it's actually quite common for us to consider the music of our youth to be the best music that ever was. The music that we learn young is the music that stays with us. And surely it's good enough for everyone. These were some thoughts that, you know, I just couldn't make them go away as I kept contemplating that phrase. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Why do we need a new song? Isn't the old song good enough? It's been adequate for a long time, perfectly acceptable for many years. What has changed that the new one is needed? Well, the psalmist actually makes it quite obvious. He needed a new song because he's realized that the old one didn't take him where he thought he was going to go. He'd written, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. So essentially, out of a place that was not good or productive and reeked of death and decay. Something about his life had taken him there. Something about the old song had taken him there. And now he's called out to the Lord. And the Lord has answered. He waited patiently for the Lord to act in his good time. And he was drawn up and out. And his feet were placed on a firm and solid rock. And from there he will proclaim the goodness of God in hopes that others will not find themselves in the same place he had been. Or if they do find themselves there, then they can know that they too can call out to the Lord and he will answer them. And he will put that same new song in their mouths as well. But again, what's the old song? What's wrong with it? He tries to answer this question with examples such as people who look to the proud instead of placing their trust in the Lord. Those who turn aside to false gods instead of having their trust in God alone. Basically, it's in letting your eyes be drawn down from God's glory and trusting more in man and what man has built and made for himself. Verse 6 talks about the sacrifices that were so rigorously enumerated in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And we hear in so many other places in the Old Testament as well. They had become an action unto themselves. You sinned, oh, you gave an animal, 
And that was your fine. That was your penance for whatever you did. And now you have to ask yourself, was it worth it? Was it worth having to sacrifice a bull? Yeah, 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 it was worth it. Which is completely missing the point of sacrifice. Which was that you were supposed to turn from your sin and once again take up your part in the covenant with God. In the new song, we take up a renewed desire to follow the Lord. To reach out in love and grace. To do the will of the Lord. Because not just His law, but His love is within our hearts. We proclaim God's righteousness to all who will listen. To all who will hear it. And it is His glory that matters. And we know that if anything comes against us in this life, anything happens to us, anything makes us afraid, we are anchored to the true rock of ages and can cry out for aid. Do not withhold Your mercy from me, O Lord. May Your love and Your truth always protect me. Think about those in the Bible itself who were given a new song to sing because the old one, was either leading them astray or had come to the end of its time. Within our readings today, we heard from Paul, who was once called Saul, a persecutor of the faithful followers of Jesus, now proclaiming God's grace and pointing to God's blessings for those in the church at Corinth, themselves formerly Jews and pagan Gentiles, who now sing the song of faith to inspire the world around them. We also have John, the baptizer, realizing that his time of preparation has ended. And he points to Jesus. He points out Jesus to his followers and he says, go, sing his song. And one of those who went was Andrew, brought his brother Simon. And the first thing thing Jesus does with Simon is say, you're going to have a new name. You're going to be called Cephas or Peter, the rock upon which I'm going to build my church. In other words, Jesus is saying to Peter, you're going to sing a new song and it's going to take you to a totally different place in the world than the old one ever did. And these are just a couple of the hundreds and the thousands that are mentioned just in the Scriptures. Let alone the millions and even the billions who have found themselves singing God's new song in their lives over the past 2,000 years. So now what about us? What about our new song? Why may we need one? Well, sometimes we get into a rut in our worship. We get into a rut in our spirituality. We get into a rut in life. We can get to a place where we're just doing things on autopilot. The prayers, the songs, the actions of worship. We're just doing them, and the meaning has been drawn out of them by one thing or another, by the cares and distractions of life. The old song isn't speaking to us anymore. As some say, we've lost the thread, and we're not sure where we're going any longer. We can feel the ground starting to give way beneath our feet, turning into muck and mire. We're at a place where we need to cry out to the Lord, And we need a new song. Maybe it's a new tune that we need. Maybe new words. Maybe a completely new composition. Maybe it's just a new appreciation for what the old song says and does and means. told you before, my favorite story of of Dr. Carl Burt comes from near the end of his life when he was giving his final guest lecture at the University of Chicago. It was 1968. Dr. Burt was 81 years old at the time. His health was failing. And the president of the university asked him just a single question after the lecture. He, he, he canceled the Q&A because he could see that Dr. Burt wasn't doing well. And he said, just one question, Dr. Burt. In all your work, in all your studies, in all your writings, in everything that you have contemplated over a lifetime of scriptural study, what is the single most profound insight that you have ever learned and that you would want to pass on 
to someone else. And remember, this is Dr. Karl Barth. This is the author of Church Dogmatics. Church Dogmatics is 14 volumes, 6 million words in that single work alone. And that doesn't count Dr. Barth's sermons and letters and articles and his other books. And the old professor thought for a moment, and he scratched his chin, and he smiled, and he said, well, I guess I would have to go back to what I learned at my mother's knee long ago. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's an old song, and we class it as a children's song, but it is such a powerful song. And if we sing it with a heart that means it, and truly testifies to what is contained within it, then it's an anthem. Not only for ourselves, but for the whole world. So do you need a new song? Are you in a place where you, you, you may need a new song or, or, or you have a new appreciation of an old one? Do you feel like you're in the muck and mire needing to be lifted out and placed on the rock? It's always a good time to cry out to the Lord. It's always a good time to seek His face and His counsel. It is always a good time to proclaim God's goodness and remember what He has done for us in the past even as we pray for what He may yet do. Let's pray about all this, shall we? Let us. Let's pray. Oh God, our Father, our rock, and our Redeemer, our Sustainer, and our Friend. You breathed the world into existence. Some say You sang it into existence, striking chords of celestial music that ring down to us today and will yet ring through to us and to those who will come after us. We yearn to sing with You, to sing the songs of creation, the songs of redemption, the songs of salvation. We're here this morning. We know these songs. And yet there are times when we've lost them, been unable to hear them, been unable to sing them. The cares of life beat us down. The concerns of daily living weigh upon us like chains dragging us deep under the water. A thousand small tragedies drown out your voice. And we find ourselves yearning for a new song. Other times we take refuge in the old songs, because, not because we find you in them, but because they remind us of a time that is past, when life was simpler, and people who we loved and cared for were with us singing those songs. We fear that if we stop singing them, we'll forget those people and what they stood for in our lives, even if you are leading us to sing something new. We know the past. We don't know the future. But you are with us every step of the way. That we can say in full confidence and passion. Do not withhold your mercy from me, O Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me. Sing with us, Lord. And put that new song in our mouths. Even if they're old words, you can make them new and vibrant and capable of speaking to us and to the world through us. But help us to sing, help us to live, help us to be your people today and every day. Amen. Let's just take a moment, return to the Lord some of what we've been given as our morning offering is collected.
We give You thanks, O loving God, that You have placed in the hearts of Your faithful people the gifts of generosity and the desire to do Your will. Use these tokens to proclaim good news to every nation and to restore all people to Christ. Amen. Come to our prayers of the people this morning. We'll be uh, praying for those, again, who are snowed in and were simply unable to get out today. I know several of the side roads have not been done yet. Uh, one of the blessings of being on the main road on, on Mountain View North, as we are, is the plow goes by multiple times, which means I get a mountain three feet high at the end of my driveway, and it's full of ice and salt and everything else. But, uh, but uh, there are many that, that were not able to get out. Limehouse this morning, as I say, there were seven of us, including myself and, uh, and, and the, the organist. Uh, but we worship God however many gather. And uh, we're grateful for the technology, and I hope that it has uh, uh, blessed a number of people. I know it has because I got a message from home. Uh, Kathy's been in bed with uh, a cold this morning. Something just crept up, and I know I've heard from several others, and they're like, I just can't get out. I cannot move. Um, it, it's that time of year. I'm finishing. I'm still fist bumping. I've been finishing for two weeks, as you may remember. But uh, it, it, it's just the cough just keeps lingering. Um, and, uh, and continue to pray for those who are struggling with that. Pray for those who are traveling this week. Uh, I know that there are a few, but my, my oldest boy and his girlfriend and, and her family, they're all headed down to Cuba for a week. I'm insanely jealous because, they, I mean, and they're leaving from this too. It's not just like, oh, we're going from what we call winter down to Cuba. No, 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 no. They're going from three feet of snow <laughs> down to Cuba. Uh, but they will not be alone in taking these trips, and we pray for those who, who, who are traveling that they will return home safely. Pray for the snowmobilers who have been praying for this weather. They can stop now. And uh, my, my wife's cousin is one of them. Um, that you've got your snow. Go enjoy it. Enjoy it while it's here. Um, but, uh, but, but pray for them that they will be safe as, as they rip around and enjoy themselves uh, in, in this time of winter sports fun. Um, Last one to pray for, or la last group to specifically pray for, um, we'll split it in two. Those who are ill and recovering, uh, and I'm thinking especially of Eleanor Mitchell here. Uh, Ian and Eleanor have not been here for the past several weeks because Eleanor has been in hospital. Uh, I'm not going to tell you a lot of details. I will tell you uh, she is at a point where she is still not able to receive visitors, um, and in fact, Ian himself has not been able to go visit her because of uh, the aforementioned cold. When you cough deep and low, they don't let you in the hospital. And, uh, and, and so Ian has been giving me updates uh, and, and will we'll accept prayers, but uh, Eleanor's not at the point where she is taking visitors yet. Um, and of course, Millie is also in, in hospital and, and continues to be in hospital. Keep her in your prayers. The other side of the category is those who are waiting for something uh, that, that will end and, and something else will begin. And I'm thinking specifically of my brother and sister-in-law. Anytime in the next three weeks, I will have a niece. Uh, I don't know exactly when. She's due anytime before the 5th of February. Uh, and this is, this is the first one on this side of the family. This will be my mother's first natural-born grandchild. And everybody is just on pins and needles waiting for little Brooke to be born. And again, she is not alone in coming into the world at this time of year. This is a crazy time of year uh, to be born because you never know what the weather is going to be. Kathy herself was born the 1st of February, and after her father went home from the birth, he didn't get back in for four days because the storm of 72 swept through St. Mary's, and, uh, and he was unable to get in. 
So we, we pray for all those who are waiting for children to be coming in this time of year, whether it's uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, it is a joyful thing, but there are always challenges. With these and other thoughts in our hearts, let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. First and foremost, we thank you for every day. We thank you for the beauty of the snow which we can see when we're not trying to get out in it. We thank you for the joy of each breath, knowing that it is a breath that you have given us in a life that you share with us and that we share with those around us. We thank you for strength shared between your children coming from your Holy Spirit. Lord, as we think upon the groups that we have mentioned and named so far and others that may come to our hearts, we, we lift them up to you in thanksgiving for their presence and in prayers that they will continue to be with us. We pray for the sick. We pray for the injured. We pray for the snowed in. We pray for those with colds and flus and pneumonias. We pray for everyone who enjoys the snowy weather. And we pray for those who are seeking to escape from it for a time. We pray for the work crews, the ones on the plows, the ones who wander around with snowblowers. We thank you for the, the, the generous ones who do not just their own yards, but the, 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 the driveways of their neighbors. We thank you for at this time we see some of the best parts of human nature coming out as we try to help each other through these very obvious storms in life. Lord, we pray for those who are dying, who will not be remaining with us, but who will pass into your hands. And we pray for those who are yet to come into this world. We pray for the mothers as they wait for their children to be born. We pray for the children and what life they will be facing as they enter into today and tomorrow, whatever may yet be. Lord, be with us all and give us confidence that because we walk with you, we can face anything. Hear us as we come to the foot of your cross, as we lay our prayers and our petitions at the foot of your cross. Hear us, Lord, and give us confidence and strength. Hear us, we pray, in silence. Now, Lord, hear us as we come together using the words that Jesus himself taught us as we pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I have to say, a snowblower makes a very distinctive sound. You can, as, as we were silent here, I'm hearing, yep, the neighbors are out there, the neighbors are still digging. Let us go forth from this place with the song number 742, Lead on, O King Eternal. 742. Thank you. 